Yesterday we spoke uh, about moving toward higher ground with a focus on placing our hope in, in the Lord. We spoke to the qualifications of God moving us toward our future, even in light of difficult circumstances. And we've all been experiencing those difficult circumstances over the past few years in light of the coronavirus. So our point was hope. How do we as people uh, take the message and apply it to our lives? And more broadly, how do we make the message missional and apply it to the lives of those God is sending us to? Let's talk about it today in the Monday After. Welcome back to the Monday After. My name is Edward King. I am the servant leader of the Experienced Church here in the city of Stockton. Thank you so much for allowing me into your homes on today. Um, from a Bible standpoint, uh, hope is the confidence that by integrating God's redemptive acts in the past with trusting human responses in the present, uh, the faithful will experience the fullness of God's goodness, both in the present and in the future, according to the Lexham Bible Dictionary. One of the words and definitions that stood out for me uh, for hope, the word that's translated as hope is kawa. Uh, it means to wait with eager expectation. In my mind, it reminds me of my wedding day. Uh, I remember it uh, like it was yesterday. And I was standing there in Yosemite uh, waiting for my bride uh, to grace the platform with me. Um, we had spent some money. Uh, we had had some some uh, tense discussions. Uh, we had done a whole bunch of planning and all of that was culminating in this moment. We, we had went through a process and we were finally at the point where, um, where, where it was going to pay, uh, where it was going to pay off. There was an expectation that all the things that we've been through, all the things that had happened um, were, were, were meaningful uh, for this moment. I was looking forward uh, to marriage um, in the same way that I look forward to fulfilling uh, God's will for my life. And if you're anything like me, um, what this means is that there is a deep trust in the conclusion of the process and that the conclusion of the process will yield our desired end. In other words, we trust that even though we're going through some things and even though there's a process that we have to keep up with. And even though that there are circumstances in this life that ultimately it's worth it because we trust God. If you believe that people genuinely desire to achieve, then hope is very much for you. Psychologists see hope as a construct of agency or free will or willpower um, and uh, what they call pathways. Uh, when we will to do something, we work toward it uh, by developing specific pathways to accomplish it. In other words, we're motivated when we're really motivated toward doing something or accomplishing a goal or achieving something in life. Um, we, we get into plan. We begin to put down on paper how we think we're going to accomplish that very um, specific goal. Um, uh, and what some psychologists suggest is that the pathways we choose have to be um, ha have to have multiple pathways um, that are available to us to accomplish this goal. It's especially important because we recognize that there are so many obstacles that come against us when we are trying to and attempting to achieve our goals. Having multiple pathways gives us a fail safe, if you will, and it causes us to not lose hope. It causes us not to become depressed in the moment because we recognize that even if our quote unquote main plan wasn't working out the way that we thought it was, that we do have a plan that ultimately is going to work out. And the big thing about hope is that hope is a very real capital in our lives. It's what wakes us up in the morning. It's what makes us want to work so hard. It's what makes us want to live these full lives because it is an expectation that the future is going to be better than even right now. It is an expectation that everything that we've been through, gone through, the work that we've put in matters, is meaningful, and is leading to an expected uh, and expected in. And so for us, the key to really getting hope, to continuing down um, the pathway of hope, to ensure that our cup of hope is full, is number one, we have to set really clear goals. In other words, hope requires 
that we see a picture of the future. We have to be really honest about what it is we're wanting to accomplish or where it is in this life we are attempting to get to. We have to set some real goals. In the work that I do outside of ministry, uh, we talk about smart, smart goals. Uh, goals that are specific and measurable and attainable and realistic and time bound. And really all this framework means is that we're setting ourselves up. We're expecting towards the things that we know that we can see that we have vision for. As a matter of fact, the Bible speaks to it that uh, people perish for lack of vision. When we can't see it, unfortunately, we can't believe it. And that means we're not going to put the effort and work uh, into achieving it. We have to cultivate a mindset of personal growth. And, and really what this means is that we really have to work towards building ourselves up. We work so hard um, today in building up our children, building up ministries, building up families, building up businesses. We, we build up a lot of things. And sometimes when we get back home at night uh, in the evening, uh, we don't have enough to build ourselves up anymore. We really do have to cultivate self uh, self growth. And, and what that means is sometimes you have to set aside time just for yourself. Yes, it does appear selfish to everybody else, but self care is so vitally important, especially as we're coming out of COVID. We need to make sure that we're taking care of ourselves, mind, body, and soul. It's not enough that you're able body if your mind is weary. And it's not enough that you have a great mind if your body is failing you. You have to put all of the things in perspective. They all have to be there for your personal growth. You also need to ensure that your values are aligned or that you are aligned with your values. Uh, in other words, you need to make sure that the actions that you're taking toward your goals make sense for who you are. Uh, you, 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 you know, sometimes we, uh, we attempt to do things that are slightly outside of really the core ethics and morals that we have. It surprises us that we do, but those morals and ethics don't go away. We have that value system in place as a boundary line for what we will and won't do, what we will and won't accept, what we think about um, is okay in life. We have to make sure that we have clear boundaries about what is acceptable and that way we know how to then form those pathways that lead us to honest hope. And then lastly, we have to take perspective about life on a regular basis. In other words, we have to make sure that we're setting some Sabbath time apart, if you will, um, to really look at what's going on around us. So for the Christian, this means that you seek the Lord. Follow his will for your life. When you're setting those clear goals, James told us, don't take thought for tomorrow or what you do, but rather say, if the Lord allows me. You really need to make sure that God is your plan and that you are planning around who God is. His will, not your will. We have to allow his word to transform our mind. If you are not in scripture and if you're not encouraging yourself in the word of God, you don't have the resource that's necessary, spiritually speaking, to move you forward. It makes no sense for you uh, not to eat on a regular basis to build your body. How is it that you're not taking in the food of the word to build your soul? Uh, you have to get inside of some Bible, whether you're at a Bible study here with us at Experience or whether you're one uh, near your home or whether you take time at work uh, on a regular basis and sit down during the course of your lunch break and you read the scripture or discuss it with some of your colleagues. You need to take time to really um, build yourself and build your mind in, uh, in the world. You need to also ensure that what you are doing is in keeping with who God is. This is aligning yourself with your values. See, God sets certain boundaries over our lives and we need to be okay with those boundaries. We actually need to seek them out because what a boundary does is it helps us keep clear focus on the things that matter most. So instead of going off on tangents, we're able to focus and keen in on the things that really matter to God and ultimately the things that are going to build us up as his, um, as his people. And then lastly, you need to step back as a Christian and see the greatness of God around you and the greatness of God that is in you. See brothers and sisters, God has a plan for your life. God wants to do wonderful things in you. And it's not enough that we just come and get inspiration on Sunday. We really have to apply the word in our everyday life. We have to take the time out 
to really build ourselves in the word. Not only that, we have to build others in it as uh, in it as well. Looking ahead this week, we're going to be in the book of Ezra, um, the third chapter on our Thursday night Bible study. We're coming from the topic of putting things to Together. And so read through Ezra chapter 3, and you also want to read through Haggai's entire book, it's two chapters, um, because that's going to give some flavor to what it is that we're going to be discussing um, on, on, this, on this week. As an assignment, I want you to find um, an image of the temple. So go out, research the temple, um, the Jewish temple. Um, some may call it Zerubbabel's temple or the second temple. Go out, I want you to look at find some pictures, and really find some pictures that speak to you. And then I want you to tell us about why the picture spoke to you. Now, if you're joining us, you can do that via Zoom. You can put it inside of the Facebook chat, um, or you can email us at pastor at experiencechurch.org. And that way we can integrate what you found in the discussion. I want to see some of these beautiful pictures, renderings, and ideals that people have and the ones that drew your attention. If for whatever reason, the temple that you chose didn't evoke any emotion in you, at least give us the basis for the decision you made in choosing it. Our questions on this week um, are going to include what place should emotion have in worship? Uh, Is there a place for our emotional selves in worship? And then what are the things that promote unity in the church? What practical steps do you think you and others could take to develop unity in the church. And, and when we talk about the church, we're talking more broadly about um, the, the, the believers. And so if you probably in this season of life aren't attending a local church, how do you promote unity amongst those in your community? How do you promote unity amongst those in your household? Um, these are questions that we definitely want to ask on on this week. Listen, as we close out this Monday morning, um, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for your week. God, we say thank you. Master, we just appreciate all that you continue to do. Thank you, God, for this time that we're able to spend together. We're praying, God, now in the name of Jesus, that you would bless us, not just on today, God, but bless us this week. God, many of us are struggling with things. Many of us are having hard times. Many of us, Father God, we're going through, but God, we believe that you can do exceeding and abundantly more than we could ever ask or think. Father God, we are trusting in you. We're placing our hope in you. We believe, God, that you have a future and a purpose for us. And so, God, we want to walk in all that you have for us. Bless us, Father, in this endeavor. Help us make it through um, this week in those areas of our life, Father God, that need building. Uh, help us to see the truth of building up in those areas through through your word, through your Holy Spirit. And then in those areas, God, where uh, where we need to change or shift focus, show us the boundaries of purpose uh, that you have for our lives. God, we're asking that you would bless us, Father God. As this week, many of our children are going back to school and some have already gone. We're asking that you would bless them, God, and place a hedge of protection around them. The world is corrupt, Father God. The world uh, just seems to be getting more difficult uh, to live in. But I trust. God, and I believe that you're able to hold us together. I trust and I believe that you'll take care of us. I trust and I believe, uh, Father God, that you'll ensure our safety. And so we're placing our babies in your hand, God, and we're asking that you do what we can't even do. And that's keep them, Father God, at all times. Father, we're praying, Father God, all those who are going through work on this week, that you would bless their jobs, Father God, that you would bless their supervisors, God, uh, especially the ones that's annoying them. Help them, Father God, in the name of Jesus, God. We're praying, uh, Father God, that you would just bless uh, the economy even, Father God, uh, that we are a part of. God, that you would just continue to lead and to guide us. Ultimately, God, we want you to help us to focus on the mission that you have for us. Help us to be the people that can take this message of hope to those who have none and share you as the source of our joy and the source of our hope. This is your servant's prayer in Jesus' name. Thank God and amen. Listen, I love you. God loves you more. There's nothing that you can do about it. I look forward to seeing you all on Thursday night as we study Ezra chapter 3. And of course, if you're ever in the Stockton area, come visit us. 5506 Tam O'Shanter Way. Uh, Drive here in the city of Stockton. God bless you and God.
keep you.